Nutrition is essential for the development of all children, but for many premature babies that need feeding assistance, the right formula can often be life-saving. Also, the latest in precision radiation for breast cancer. I'm Olga Villaverde. Access Health starts right now. Breast cancer in women is estimated to be the most common cancer worldwide. However, the rate of survival has increased dramatically in recent decades. Today, we're gonna to take a look at an innovation enabling physicians to provide a more personalized and more precise radiation treatment for patients. Incredible progress has been made in the treatment of breast cancer over the last two decades, largely due to the evolving ability to treat breast cancers differently based on their individual characteristics. Today, I paid a visit to the Miami Cancer Institute where they're using some of the latest technology to treat breast cancer. I sat down with Dr. Maria Amelia Rodriguez, a radiation oncologist. Dr. Rodriguez, thank you so much for your time and especially to have this conversation, which is so important. Thank you for being here, Olga. It's always a pleasure to discuss such an important issue for women. Breast cancer actually affects one in eight women in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So it is important to bring awareness, to talk about early detection, treatment options, including surgery, systemic therapies, chemotherapy or not, and radiation therapy. I want to talk about treatments. How have they evolved in, let's say, the last 20 years? Tremendously. So in terms of the first treatment for breast cancer is surgery. So we don't do surgeries that were so mutilating anymore. Thank goodness. And when women have to have a mastectomy, we have immediate reconstruction. Yes. But for most women, we don't even have to do a mastectomy. They can simply have removal of the area of tumor and have additional treatments, radiation, maybe some hormonal pill or in times chemotherapy as well. Now I want to talk about radiation. Where are we today when it comes to radiation for breast cancer? Because let's face it, when a woman comes in and they know they're going to get radiation, uh, they're scared, uh, they think of the burning, what's going to happen, what are the side effects? In the case of radiation, yes, there is a general fear of radiation um, because in the past, Again, the technology wasn't where we are now, and uh, bad things happened. I mean, women got burned. We don't see that anymore, luckily, because of the new technologies that we have. And let's talk about that new technology that's so unique here at Miami Cancer Institute. So at Miami Cancer Institute, we have literally every single piece of radiation um, available. Uh, so as physicians here, it's a pleasure to work here because we can really recommend and pinpoint the specific machine that would be the most applicable to that patient. It's tailored to that individual's needs. Absolutely. And there's a new one, it's called Radix Act. What makes that so unique and special? It's a very, um, peculiar machine. So you picture a CT scan mm -hmm. that goes around somebody's body. So that machine is like, it's a CT scan at the same time that it has a linear accelerator that produces radiation inside it. So it delivers radiation in a helical form. So a spiral. So the patient will travel through the machine and it's delivering that radiation. And inside that machine, there are tiny little pieces that block the radiation or allow the radiation to go through. In that way, you can literally paint the radiation to mm. that specific area where you want it to go and you can literally block where you don't want it to go as the patient is going through the radiation machine. So that allows for a more targeted approach, right doctor? What it means is, for example, a woman with left-sided breast cancer, after that patient has gone through surgery and has gone to chemotherapy that sometimes can affect the heart, they are naturally very concerned when they come to me of and course. they want to know how I'm going to make sure that the radiation is not damaged their healthy heart. 
So by using the Red Exact, we can, again, just simply paint that radiation that it will conform to the shape of the area that we need to treat, and it will block and radiation will not go to that patient's heart. That's fantastic. Who is a good candidate for this therapy? Many patients. In the case of breast cancer, um, patients with very early stage breast cancer that we use a technique called partial breast radiation, where we don't treat the entire breast tissue. They are eligible for a therapy with Red Exact, but also the patients where we need to treat not only the area where the breast was in the case of a mastectomy, but the regional lymph glands. So those lymph glands are located in close vicinity to some important structures, such as the lung, the heart, in the case of a left-sided breast cancer, they are close uh, to the esophagus and uh, the and the trachea. Um, so we can then, with the Rad Exact, literally, as I had said before, paint where the radiation goes, um, and therefore avoid the toxicity of uh, radiation therapy. Doctor, again, medicine is always evolving, uh, new equipment, new therapies. This tumor is creating this abnormality. I see you have a passion for this, and I know what patients mean to you. For a patient coming in, knowing that they're going to be going through these treatments and possibly this new unique one, uh, what words would you say to, to help motivate them through, through such a difficult process? It's the passion of the people that work here. So my patients often will tell me, either in the middle of their course of radiation or at the end of their radiation, that they feel that every person that comes in contact with them really has a vested interest in them. From the receptionist, to the medical assistant, to the nurse, to the therapist on the machine. So they really feel the difference that there's a special touch inside this institute, and it's the people. And it's all of that, along with the therapies, that can save more lives. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. And if you'd like more information, you can go to radexact.com or you can check out our website, accesshealth.tv. The views contained and expressed in this show, including any accompanying oral commentary, are those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views or policies of Accuray Incorporated or its subsidiaries. Important safety information. Most side effects of radiotherapy, including radiotherapy delivered with Accuray systems, are mild and temporary, often involving fatigue, nausea, and skin irritation. Side effects can be severe, however, leading to pain, alterations in normal body functions, for example, urinary or salivary function, deterioration of quality of life, permanent injury, and even death. Side effects can occur during or shortly after radiation treatment or in the months and years following radiation. The nature and severity of side effects depend on many factors, including the size and location of the treated tumor, the treatment technique, for example, the radiation dose, the patient's general medical condition, to name a few. For more details about the side effects of your radiation therapy and if treatment with an Accuray product is right for you, ask your doctor. Parenteral nutrition, or PN, is a method of intravenous nutrition that is often used in premature babies who cannot maintain adequate intake of food via oral or tube feeding directly into the gastrointestinal tract. PN was first used in preterm newborn infants almost 50 years ago and has proven to be a life-saving tool, providing many babies with necessary nourishment. However, prolonged PN is associated with liver complications. Axis Health caught up with Dr. Sivan Kinberg, director of the Pediatric Intestinal Rehabilitation Center at Columbia University in New York City, to learn more. 
Short bowel syndrome is the most common cause of intestinal failure. When we say intestinal failure, it's a child with short bowel syndrome that is dependent on parental nutrition for more than 60 days. TPN is life-saving in these children. Before we had TPN, we had no good way to provide them with the nutrition support that they needed. Prince Adrian Hamlin was born two and a half months too soon at one pound, 15 ounces. He has survived blood transfusions, pneumonia, countless surgeries, and has spent most of his life with a respiratory support system. After a life-threatening infection in his intestines resulted in emergency surgery, Adrian was recovering, ultimately left with only 15 centimeters of his small intestine. His mother, Vicki Poole, never gave up hope for her baby to thrive. He was very loud. He was ripping off the leads, and they were like, Mama, he is a fighter. He's strong. And I already knew, that that's my kid fell in love at first sight. He was a preemie and we probably had about a month, maybe a month and a week left there before I was able to take my son home. And all of a sudden, that wasn't the case. At five months, he ended up getting um, a long-term apparatus for his TPN feeding, as well as a, a G-tube, which is his feeding tube. And right then, I knew that was the game changer because this means this is more long-term care. I wanna say about seven months in, we're looking at his liver enzyme numbers and they were astronomically high. They were, they were dangerously high to the point Dr. Kimberg and the team talking to me about maybe having to do a biopsy. No one wants your child to get cut into, you know? <laughs> That's just scary in itself. Coming up, doctors try an alternative formula for baby Adrian. Until 2018, we only had a soy-based lipid emulsion that was FDA approved, and our options were very limited. Um, and this was the only lipid emulsion that we had to provide children with the crucial fat source that they need to grow and thrive. And the problem with a soybean-based lipid emulsion is that it has many side effects, and it can cause damage to the liver, which is known as PN-associated cholestasis, which was recently renamed intestinal failure-associated liver disease, also known as IFALD. IFALD is the most common complication in children with intestinal failure who are dependent on long-term parental nutrition. And IFALD remains the greatest cause of morbidity and mortality in these children. And in 2004, specialists at Boston Children's Hospital started looking for an alternative to the traditional soybean-based lipid emulsion. And this alternative was a Megavan, which is a 100% fish oil-based lipid emulsion. Indications and usage. Omegavin is indicated as a source of calories and fatty acids in pediatric patients with parenteral nutrition-associated cholestasis, also known as PNAC. Omegavin is not indicated for the prevention of PNAC. It has not been demonstrated that Omegavin prevents PNAC in parenteral nutrition PN-dependent patients. It has not been demonstrated that the clinical outcomes observed in patients treated with Omegavin are a result of the omega-6, omega-3 fatty acid ratio of the product. Over the next few years, many centers, including Columbia, began using a Megavan for compassionate use through the FDA. So Megavan was available for children with liver disease that really needed it. And in 2018, a Megavan became FDA approved and became available for children both in the hospital and at home. He's still on a Megavan um, to this current day. He's picking up weight beautifully. His bilirubin numbers are normal, and then his liver enzyme numbers are greatly lower now. Adrian is a perfect example of how a child can thrive and how our technologies and all of the advancements that we have made in this field make a real difference for these children. I'm completely grateful uh, for God's grace and mercy and for the teams that have loved us and been a village especially with medically fragile children. You do not do it by yourself. And uh, we all love this kid. And uh, God, the future is whew, very bright.
For more information on the subject discussed today, visit FresenyasCabiNutrition.com. Important safety information. Omegavin is a fish oil-based intravenous lipid emulsion that is a source of calories and fatty acids in pediatric patients with parenteral nutrition-associated cholestasis, also known as PNAC. Omegavin does not prevent PNAC. It has not been demonstrated that the clinical outcomes seen in pediatric patients treated with Omegavin are a result of the omega-6, omega-3 fatty acid ratio of the product. Omegavin is available by prescription only. Your healthcare provider will prescribe the right dose and rate for your child's nutritional needs. Omegavin should not be received by patients who have a known allergy to fish or egg protein or to any of the ingredients in Omegavin, a severe bleeding disorder, or abnormally high levels of lipid in the blood. Prior to your child receiving Omegavin, tell your child's health care provider about all medical conditions and all medications that your child is taking, including prescription, over-the-counter medicines, vitamins, herbal and oral supplements, blood thinners or blood thinning agents. Deaths in preterm infants after infusion of soybean oil-based intravenous lipid emulsions have been reported in medical literature. Autopsy findings in these preterm infants included intravascular lipid buildup in the lungs. The risk of lipid buildup in the lungs with omegavin is unknown. Preterm and small for gestational age infants have poor clearance of intravenous lipid emulsion and increased free fatty acid blood plasma levels following lipid emulsion infusion. Your child's health care provider will monitor your child while receiving omegavin for signs and symptoms of fluid buildup in tissues between the chest and lung or fluid buildup around the heart. Omegavin may cause serious side effects, including allergic reactions. Omegavin contains fish oil and egg phospholipids, which may cause allergic reactions. Signs or symptoms of an allergic reaction may include shortness of breath, rapid heart rate, headache, sweating, dizziness, confusion, rash, hives, redness of the skin, fever, or chills. Contact your child's health care provider immediately if your child is experiencing an allergic reaction. Other serious side effects include the risk of infections, fat overload syndrome, refeeding syndrome, and high blood lipids may occur. Patients with damaged kidney function, including preterm infants, are at increased risk for aluminum toxicity. Your child's health care provider will routinely conduct laboratory tests to monitor your child's blood while receiving Omegavin. Tell your child's health care provider right away if your child has any of the following symptoms during treatment with Omegavin. The most common side effects greater than 15% for Omegavin Omegavin include vomiting, agitation, slower than normal heartbeat, interruption of breathing, and viral infection. These are not all the possible side effects associated with Omegavin. Call your child's health care provider for medical advice regarding Omegavin side effects. These highlights do not include all the information needed to use Omegavin safely and effectively. To learn more about Omegavin for your child, talk to your child's health care provider. The FDA-approved product labeling can be found at www.fresenyuscabinutrition.com or call Call 1-800-551-7176, option 4. Special thanks to all of our guests. And for more information, or if you've missed any part of the show today, visit AxisHealth.tv. We'll see you next time. Take care.